Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And we're finally back on PTCGO for the Guardians Rising deck analysis videos. Um, some people like the IRL ones, but I'm a huge fan of the PTCGO because you can see the cards displayed very nicely and we get to demonstrate some battles. So, today it's going to be Trevenant Vileplume. It's an archetype that some people have hyped up. I'm not too certain how strong this is actually going to be. I'm pretty certain that Decidueye is overall the more well-rounded deck, but we're still going to explore this archetype and see the differences and how potentially this can be stronger at times. So, let's start with the new attacker. First of all, uh, it's a Grass Phantom, which is something we haven't had previously, but now we do, so it can take advantage of Forest of Giant Plants, meaning that we can go into our Trevenant EX, uh, just not EX, just our regular Trevenant um, Grass type, um, stage 1 on the very first turn. It has 120 HP, which is decent bulk for a stage 1. And we focus on its first attack, Poltergeist, which does 30. Your opponent reveals their entire hand, and the attack does 30 for each trainer card you find there. Bearing in mind that trainer does include supporter and stadium and tool cards, not only um, actual item cards. So this can rack up a good amount. Um, typically, it's rare that this will be lower than 60. Um, I think it goes from 90 to probably 120 is an average for Trevenant, I would say, for just a DCE, which is pretty good. But bear in mind that once you do item lock, people draw pass a few times, and suddenly this starts getting big and really dangerous. Um, we are grass type, so naturally we can hit things like Lapras quite hard, which is potentially going to be more popular because of Aqua Patch. Um, there's a few other things that we can hit quite nicely, but just in general, um, decks that have a lot of item cards are going to struggle. Think, uh, sorry, not item cards, just trainer cards. Think about the new Sylveon that um, is really low on Pokemon and energy and just plays tons of supporters and other stall cards. Uh, well, Poltergeist is going to be doing a lot of damage in those cases. Um, additionally, Tauros Garbodor is going to be using lots of uh, hammers and things like that that we can turn off with our plume then they get stuck in their hand Postgeist again gets very strong so potentially after a few turns of being stalled with Vile plume Postgeist is going to get into one hit KOs and that's pretty much what we hope to do in these uh, situations um, one of the big weaknesses of the Trevenant is that this does vary it depends on what's in your opponent's hand obviously as we get into the later game when they do start taking prizes on you they start ending themselves to a low hand size just to have protection from poltergeist but at the same time that can really hurt them because it means they lower their outs to things like stall which is also a very valid option for this deck so even though people will try and play around poltergeist by lowering their hand size lowering their hand size can still really hurt them in this deck because we can still spread with the break and we have three lysander in here to complement that so i do like the attack it can be really strong at times but it's a little bit risky here and there we do have the trevenant break now, because the Stage 1 is a Grass type, we can also go into this guy on the very first turn, despite him being Psychic type. Bear in mind when you do break Evolve, your typing changes, so if you're trying to hit for multiple weaknesses, you can not only hit for Grass weakness with Poltergeist, you can also hit for Psychic weakness with Poltergeist um, once we break Evolve. So things like the Espeon, GX, and EX, of course, um, we can hit them with Poltergeist for weakness also. We jump up to 160 HP, which is a lot more tanky, which is very good for us. And we gain the attack Sil uh, Silent Fear, which we've seen before previously. The old Trevenant uh, item lock deck used Silent Fear to great effect. And it does three counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Very, very strong spread damage attack. Um, and really, the win condition for this deck sometimes is going to be big blowouts of Poltergeist. But oftentimes, we are trying to Lysander stall something start spreading, start spreading, and start spreading, and um, take out shamans, put things in lower ranges to where Poltergeist will most likely always get one hits, and just take cheeky knockouts on lower HP Pokemon here and there. It's very, very painful, very annoying, and it can really frustrate the opponent. So gaining great HP, helping us tank a bit more, and gaining the option to spread as well is really cool for the deck. Uh, so yeah, 4-4-3 four, four, line to try and be consistent at getting these out. And a 2-2-2 two, two, two line of Vileplume, this is pretty commonplace often. Um, Vileplume, of course, having the irritating pollen ability, preventing each player from using their item cards from their hand. Um, 
pretty simple stuff really uh, we try and get on, into this on the first turn shut people down so they can't start playing items from their hand to get them away and also just make things very awkward for them uh, for when we're trying to stall things it fits pretty neatly next up we have two tapu lele gx this does a lot for the deck it means that we can search out specific supporters, not only on turn one, where we have a very strong chance of hitting Ly uh, Sycamore to draw lots of cards. It also means that we can grab things like Lysander when we have developed our board to try and stall people. Um, it's really great to have more outs into these cards once we are under item lock ourselves, because we need to keep developing our own stage ones, of course. Additionally, Tapu Lele is an attacker, and a pretty good one at that. Um, as we've seen with Decidueye, where they used to play Lugia, now we have Tapu Lele that does almost the same thing. Energy Drive, of course, doing 20 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So um, if Poltergeist is failing you, you can move into Tapu Lele. Um, or if you've been spreading damage with Silent Fear, Tapu Lele can finish things off. Very valid attacker, very often will be attacking in between you setting up Trevenants. Um, so bear that in mind. We also play Psychic Energy in here. So Tapu Cure can help you out against like the tri the uh, Decidueye matchup, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it's rare that you'll use the GX attack um, because you want to be putting more pressure on a lot of the time, but you can do that if the situations are correct for it. Uh, next up, three Shaman X. Just like the Decidueye list, um, you want to be drawing lots of cards turn one. Shaman lets you do that. On to the items. We are playing one Revitalizer, um, hoping to recover... Trevenant pieces if a Vileplume ever gets knocked out, or a Vileplume if you need to re-establish it. Or just turn one, it means that we can discard some of these cards as we cycle. Hope to hit Revitalizer to recover them instantly straight to the hand, put them all back down in one turn once we've hit the forest. Uh, potential for going up to two just like Decidueye, but right now I'm happy as is. Um, because unlike Decidueye where you have to go up three stages, a lot of the time you can just go into a stage one a lot more consistently and wait for the break to come later on. And of course, Revitalizer can't recover the break anyway. Next up, we have two Timer Ball. Really great card in this deck. Um, it's better than just playing four level because level is only accessing Phantom, Gloom, and Oddish. Whereas Timer Ball is getting you your bigger things. It's getting you Valplume, Trevs, and Trev Breaks. So I'm playing a 2-2 split of these Ball Search cards. Really, really great when you start flipping these and getting heads. Um, on average, you're getting one Evolution Pokemon, which is going to be helpful. But when you do hit those sem those two heads, um, man, it's so good for your turn one. And um, seeing as though we're playing quite an RNG heavy deck already, it felt correct to put some timer balls in here to really uh, go all the way on RNG in here. Uh, next up, four mail to just start activating, start finding forests, start finding ultra balls. These are probably your two most important four ofs of the deck. Um, and mail helps us access those that little bit quicker and helps us cycle through in general. Ultra Ball, we all know why it's in here. Tapu Lele, Shaman, and just finding Pokemon in general, really good for you. Uh, the Four Forest, of course, mandatory to start evolving. One Olympia in here. I think with one Olympia, because we have Tapu Leles, it becomes reasonable as a one-off to play. Um, unlike Decidueye, where you can't be stalled because you always have infinite damage, technically, because Decidueye is going to be poking things here and there every turn with its snipes, Trevenant doesn't have that luxury. So we do need to play double Floatstone and Olympia to try and move out of our chunky Pokemon if we haven't developed Floatstones on them. Bear in mind, Trev has a two retreat cost. Um, Shaman and Lele only have a one, but of course Vileplume has the fat three retreat. So having the Olympia is nice. Three of Lysander. I've said so often that Stall is one of our best bets so that we can start getting Silent Fears off, start developing Trevenants to the bench, start getting extra attachments on the board. Lysander makes this all possible. A 3N as well, just a shuffle draw, simple stuff. And for Sycamore, the most powerful, the most favoured supporter on the first turn so that we can start having high chances of getting Trevenant and Vileplume developed. And, you know, at other points in the game, it's going to be helpful too for digging harder into the deck to get more energy, etc. Uh, two floats, as I say, um, just for the movement that we need. And finishing it off with 4 DCE, Poltergeist, Sky Return, and... Um, energy Drive will work off of this, and we have the Four Psychic for the Break Attack, and also the Tapu Cure at times. Bear in mind also, you can put it onto things like Barplume just for retreating if you haven't developed Float Stones. So, that is going to be the list. A uh, few other options in here. Um, if you don't want to play the Break, you can play Trevenant of the X, 
uh, for more stalling if you want to. Um, I feel like the break is still probably my favorite way to go, but you could go a more um, like a Vespi Vile style and um, just play four DCE, no break, and just the lower forms of Trev. That's potentially viable. If you're gonna go down that route, I would suggest Bunnelby to recover DCEs because you will only then be playing four. You will really increase your chance of getting Tillman Vileplume if you want to do that. Um, so bear that in mind, but you just go down to four energy and that can be kind of awkward for you. Bunnelby is still a consideration for this deck, even now with eight energy. Uh, you can recover things like Olympia, Lysander, and just stall people out because you play through Lysander and item lock. And if you just start milling, um, you can get rid of their outs and that could be really good for you. So Bunnelby could be a viable one or two of. The new Tapu Coco, when that comes out, um, I think will be a natural fit in here because it's a free retreat pivot and it could do more spread. So again, that would be one. When it's released, I think that will be a good Pokemon to add into the deck. Item-wise, I think it's fairly standard. I think you'd mess around with counts rather than putting in new cards or anything like that. Um, I think that's all fine. Potentially a Lily in here if you want to have a different term on supporter than Sycamore. Um, but overall, I think that would be it. Um, Pokemon-wise, I can't think of many other options. Uh, there is the actual other Trevenant that you w might want to play. We're already playing Psychic and DCE, so potentially the Nervous Sieve Trevenant is something to go for. If combining a Vitam Lock, sometimes it's hard for your opponent to keep finding energies to attach. Could be annoying for some high attack cost Pokemon like um, Volcanion and stuff like that. Um, you buy yourself extra turns. Um, I think it's kind of niche to play a one of, and it's not really um, uh, very often that you'll get huge value from it. A lot of the time you just want to be pressuring Poltergeist as quickly as possible, but that is potentially an option. So the ladder is fresh. We could be facing anything. Let's see what we come up against and how Trevenant Plume fares. Um, as I play this deck, I don't think that it is the best item lock deck out there. I think Decidueye Plume will still hold that spot right now. Um, however, matchup wise, it's very different. Trevenant has much better Lapras. I personally think it has a better Sylveon than Decidueye does. Um, and you can even play Espeon EX. I should actually mention that because we're doing Silent Fear spreads, you can. Play Espeon EX to good effect in this deck. Um, what I do think is this has a better matchup against Decidueye because it's easier for us to set up. Um, it's more likely that we get the Vileplume in my opinion and um, or it's just as likely but we also develop our, uh, our attackers a lot easier than Decidueye does in multiple counts so I think we're pretty good in mirror situations. Oh man our opponent leads Wob. No fair. Okay. Right, we will go for level ball here. So we would have had an excellent hand had there not have been a wobble effect in the active. But of course, that is something that is more commonplace these days because of Decidueye. I'm going to put down Phantom, put down the forest. I'm going to Lele here. Um, I'm going to consider getting rid of a supporter just to get rid of one. We have prized a Sycamore though, so I might not do. I'll put it down regardless just because it's a handy attacker uh, later on. And more Sycamore here. You can still develop Trev, which is nice. Um, I think we can leave it there. Not too much else we need to do here. We'll pass. Let's see what Wobbuffet variant this is. <laughs> it could be a lot of things. A lot of things just tech one or two of Wobs. Some of them are more heavy focused. We'll find out. Ooh, is that a Mallow? Yeah. Okay, so it's Lycan Rock. Um, interesting. Wow, that's such a strong start from them. Hammers are really bad for us. We can 
go Lele for Lysander here, take out the Rock Rough. As long as he has one item. Is a weakness. Could ultra wall for another shaman and just try and dig hard, but I don't think we have that likely chances of getting into a Vile Plume. Okay, they have two supporters. Okay, there's a gloom. I think we could well just run out of energy this game. Oh, the top deck Sycamore. <laughs> Interesting. They could have retreated into a rock rough just to try and draw more cards with Shaman, but they opted not to. They're going to grab a Lycan Rock. Oh, they could have Brooklyn Hill as well. They can try and develop more Pokemon now. Yeah, they're going to grab themselves a Carbink. Another Wobbuffet. And they pass. Okay, we do. I think it's important to put the floatstone on rather than ultra balling just for a vile plume and guaranteeing it. I think this is better. Uh, Revitalizer is really bad here. Let's have a look at the hand. It has to be all four of them. Yeah, just 60. Okay, so we're getting crunched next turn. And potentially delinquented as well. Oh, they top deck N. <laughs> they keep top decking new cards. Got us into plume at least. Choice band makes no difference here. They are going to retreat. down quite a few DC already. You can finally grab Shaman though. We can't break evolve of course because we want to keep as a grass type to pressure as much as possible here. Let's see what's in the box. 36912, we get the knockout. Holy. That's pretty big. <laughs> That's pretty good. That was really risky of them. They could have just stayed on the bench. Three DC in the discard though. They're still fairly safe. Um. Yeah, one of our DC is prized as well. We 
going to do this. Lysander it up now to try and make sure they can't VS the back flare grunts and stuff. Hopefully. Of course they can just attach retreat, but that's an attachment that's not going on a rock rough, so that's pretty good. Lysander to the Shaman. Sycamore. Hmm. It's risky, but I think we've got to race this guy to try and win. We can't go back into this trev because he could have flare grunt. My concern is that they have midnight lichen rock and they're going to stall us out. It's a very genuine concern. We need to draw into our psychics. Oh, great turn to draw the psychic. So hopefully he doesn't have Midnight Form plus Energy. Okay, he has to attach the Carbink. Gets Wobbuffet back. Maybe he can search some cards out. Yeah, he's going to get Flare Grunt, I think. Potentially Lysander. They're pretty much the same at this point. Yeah, Flare Grunt. Seems good. Revitalizer just have more cards in our deck because we could easily deck out. Um, concern is now that they could top deck more VS Seekers and just win the game. Um, but any of them gives them even more cards, so I guess we just play stuff. Maybe the Revitalizer was wrong, huh? Yeah, I, I still need to race, so we'll just. I'll play down cards instead. These clutch timer balls. Don't want to evolve the breaks, I don't think. Although it does give me one extra out. Ah, oh, never lucky. Now we just have to pray that they don't have uh, energy denial card. But it is Lycan Rock. They're quite likely to. Delinquent. Twenty five percent that we can draw our energy. Uh oh. Whew. Saved by the flips. Hmm. Can we do it? Can we close out this game with our last energy? Let's find out. Where's Bunnelby now? Energy. Oh, never lucky. Oh, panic stations. Dropping break comes down. Ah, oh, VSC could grunt his game. Well, one loss to 
a deck that has Wobber Fett and Hammers. Uh, yeah, this has the same issues as Decidueye does. Um, we were close though. We were very close. Had we not prized an energy as well and been able to actually fish it out of our prizes instead of being in the bottom three, if it was in the top three, maybe we could have enough to get there. With one more Silent Fear, we'd take two of our prizes. Um, leaving it with just one to go, and that Carb Ink would have been in range of one more Silent Fear, so... We were very close there, despite all of those issues. We did have a big KO on the Lycan Rock, of course. That does help matters. Okay, we're going second here, which is probably an issue. But our opponent's playing Water, I think, just based on the sleeves. So this could be good for us. Oftentimes, however, they do play Glaceon as part of their boxy build. Yep, we see Lapras and Palkia. This is probably decent for us. Especially because we can end turn one as well. As long as they don't end our hand. Ending turn one is good because the opponent naturally gets rid of all the items from their hand. And then we just end them. And hopefully they draw into more once we develop Plume. So we see Energy, Fury Belt, Rough Seas comes down, Ultra Ball, and they get rid of a Shaman, so their hand is really good. <laughs> also, they get a Water in the discard pile. Maybe it's just Aqua Patch, and they just go Aqua Patch Sycamore. Oh, they go Glaceon. Glaceon Sycamore? Glaceon Lele? Glaceon Shaman? All the options. Uh, Glaceon Shaman. Okay, here comes Elixirs. Straight to that Glaceon, he knows. Just a pass, huh. Whiff of a mail early is pretty bad. Imagine if that had been timeable. Could have been the dream. Uh oh. Not good. Timeable? No. My sound is good though. No vile plume. But a potential KO. What I love is it's always like, who knows? 3, 6, 9, 12, 240. Whew! The power. Picking up. Couple of nice cards there. We need to play around the Glaceon a lot, so. If they promote Shaman, they're scared. Scared of us. Scared of our power. Ball. Gonna get rid of some of those pesky trainer cards. Making Trevenant do mean things. For Tapu Lele. Lele gonna use that Wonder Tag to grab an N. Ending us down to four cards seems pretty strong. They can float stone up as well. And they're gonna end, refresh the hand. Hmm. Interesting. We got end into a pretty good hand, all things considered. Get a backup Trev, we can get a level ball, fish one card out. Potentially Lysander up by the Lapras Rakeo, who knows? Man, if a Fury Belt was on Glaceon, could KO this with Plume. Uh, more Ultra Balls, they're thinning their hand as much as possible. Yeah, just going for the Manaphy. Oh, Oranguru, interesting. Oh, I would not instruct this turn. I would wait until next turn. Much smarter. 
Oh, they got the career belt though. Rewarded. Ah, oh, VS Eco, double rewarded. Pushing back that N. So we know they've got 30 damage. And they're taking a prize. Hmm. How risky am I feeling? Killing the Manaphy could be jokes. Let's go for it. A hey. get up out, get up out of here. Nice. Getting sick of all level ball is like the dream as well. They have N, of course, but. Of just bopping things. Good old weakness. I'm coming for you, Lapras. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> well, that's a shaman or a lele. Awesome. We've not cycled like a tall all game, so. Maybe this will be our turn that we cycle lots of cards. Do we go Lele first or do we go Shaman first? Because we could potentially get Lysander. So I think we go Shaman first. Potentially win this turn. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Well, pretty good here. It's another shaman. It's another fresh six cards. This is where the cycle comes in. We have Lysander. Manaphy's gone, so this could be just stuck here. Um, draw two, hope for Vileplume. Let's see how lucky we are. Three. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Trev just bopped things. That's funny. Nice. Nice win for Trev. Eating up those Laprases that everyone wants to test out because of Aqua Patch. Feels good, man. Feels good. Their risky Oranguru meant that we could KO the, sh the Manaphy that turn and... I don't know, man. I think they could have been more careful. Right, we win the flip. So let's see if this time we can develop Termon Plume. Haven't been able to thus far. But now we have a more favourable hand, I feel. And looks like we might be in a mirror. And if we're the one going first, Plume is definitely the priority here. They play Rainbow Energy. Interesting. Ooh, the second Ultra Ball is so good for us. Oh, it's... Garbador plus forest. Hmm. I don't know what this is. I can honestly say that. Picking up forest makes this ultra ball a lot more awkward. I really don't, don't want to get rid of floatstone. Maybe just get rid of the other Ultra Ball. Oh, that can't be right. No, get rid of Floatstone. Okay. 
Okay, we go for Oddish now. Okay. Now, there's already a few items in our discard pile, <laughs> and it's only going to get worse. But I think if we develop Plume, it's going to be hard for them to keep getting Pokemon out, right? That's that's the way this goes. That's how this works. Let's go Timer Ball. Not bad. Going even is all we can hope for, really. Keep digging. I want to find a float stone for my Vile Plume. Trev Break means we hit for weakness on the garbs, which is cool. We have another DC in hand, so I think that's the thing we just hold. Rather than Sycamoring here. Good turn one. One Trev developed, one Plume developed. Seems decent. We're about to get stomped off. GG. Surely, surely this is GG. Unless he's got all energy in here. Hitting for weakness. Four. Yeah. Nice. Just Trev things. See, it's a lot more pressure than Decidueye turn one. You see? That's what's good about this. Although it, it can be less pressure. <laughs> it's all It all depends on their hand. Let's have one more game for funsies. Because Trev Plume does seem like a funsies deck. So far we've hit for weakness on the Lycan Rock, we've hit for weakness on the Lapras, and we hit for weakness on the Garbodor. So let's see if, see if we can't do it again. Looks like we're up against a Volk this time from just the opening screen, what it looked like. Going first again, which is very good. Um, we do play three Lysander. So Lysander is normally the win condition for the Decidueye players. So it's no different for us here. Difference, actually, a difference is in our favor because we're a non X that gets knocked out each time. <sighs> we still have two Tapu Lele in here, so potentially we can still be fine. We'll see. Okay. Timer Ball is really bad when you open without Forest. So we'll be getting rid of that in a Psychic here. I'm going to grab Shaman. Uh, it's two cards. Would I rather just sick them all this hand? I think I do want to just sick them all this hand straight away. It also develops Tapu Lele, which is like low key quite a good thing for us. I think I would attach an energy as well. Well, we've got Vile Plume, and we can Shaman here, so this could be very good. Well, there's a Phantom. Again, not more, not much more that we could ask for here. Um, because we only have Psychic Energy in hand, I think I retreat to the Lele here. Oh, but it's guaranteed to not pressure him much. I think maybe we just sack the Psychic and go Phantom. 
Okay. Pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. It's the name of the game. Let's see what happens. Fire energy and an end straight away. We get Trev DCE. We can just bop him. Okay, gets a baby bulk. Let's try and draw some cards. Draw some Trevs. Oh, loads of items. Let's pass. <laughs> Okay, there's a Volky X. And another N. That's generous. Nice. That's a much nicer hand for us. Now the dream is finding a Trev break to try and be a bit tankier. Can't win them all. Poltergeist. Oh my goodness. It's so good for us. The dream. He promoted this one as well. That's so risky. Did he top deck? Oh, he top decked a fire. Okay, so we can do 40. But we know we've got the KO now. <laughs> Trevon and OP. Okay, so what have we learned? <laughs> Trevon and going first is such a scummy thing to do. And it just, it's just much more front loaded pressure. It's much more similar to Vespi Vile um, in terms of it just gets all its pressure out turn one and just says, you know what? I can beat you if your hand isn't good enough. And from what we saw, in these few games, <coughs> lots of decks are still very item focused. And even with the increased support of Tapu Lele and stuff, this could still compete and just scum people out of wins. We didn't see much action from Trev Break. It almost won us the game against Lycanroc. Um, but that's something going forward we'll have to analyze and see if it's worth keeping or dropping. Because it looks like the way this deck wins is just by going, haha, Poltergeist turn one or two and spamming that. So. Interesting, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this archetype. Go out, have some fun with yourselves. Tunnel Ball is jokes, and so is this deck. So let me know what you guys think about the deck, um, the list, and the channel. Any other things, the new set in general. What do you want to see next on the channel? Uh, we'll still be doing brand new lists before we start looking at old revamped ones. Bear in mind as well, the stream is back as per usual. Every week on Wednesday, we stream. And this week in particular, it will be the new format stuff. Uh, me and Jack are going to be battling out against each other, so it should be a load of fun. Hope to see you there on Twitch. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in another video soon.